Hi everyone. Now I hope my lighting is okay. I'm in the kitchen right now and wanted to do this video. A few people have asked me if I would do this, so here I am. Um, how to do coffee stained uh, paper, coffee stained material, and then stamping. So pretty basic. Here I have a strong cup of coffee. I made sure I had lots of coffee grounds in my, uh, I do a pour over when I drink coffee. So I made sure I had lots of coffee grounds. So just a strong cup of coffee. And we're just going to pour this onto this baking sheet. And we'll start with this piece of material, I think. It just soaks it right up. I think I'll leave that on the side for now because I'm going to do a sheet of paper. And I personally like to leave some white spots in mine or close to white, you know, some areas like this. I just like doing that. Now, you can just lay this out on a piece of paper towel to dry and or what you can do is while it's laid out like this you can also come in with another piece of paper let's just say like this and you don't have to mount it on top of the first piece but just lay out your coffee stained this was a doily I think or something like that piece of lace at any rate and let that dry and you will end up with the design in the background somewhat <laughs> of the lace so I'm going to put that aside I'm going to put this aside and then I'm going to come in with the full doily and do another one we could just pour some more coffee right over the top here You can squeeze this out, lay that out to dry. Uh, some more coffee. I'm going to take my piece of material. This is just from a pillowcase. Dip it in and then squeeze it a bit. Lay that out to dry. And what you can do is come in later and drop some more um, coffee on top to make some areas that will be more stained than other areas. So I don't know how much you can pick up there. Some areas are darker than others. And then let's just do another. And what you can do with this is lay it right on top of your burner. Let it, some of the coffee drip off. Lay it right on top of a burner, and that will pick up the design of the burner. 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 <laughs> you know that swirly design that your burner has? Simple as that. Let them dry. You can always come back in later if you want. Um, see, I have lots of coffee left here. If you want to uh, add some spots to it, come back later and do that. 
So, simple as that. Now I'm my fingers are wet. I'm going to have to dry this. Uh, we're going to come back to my table and we will do our stamping. Okay, so after you stain your papers and your materials, you can put the um, oven on around 200 and lay them on a baking sheet and let them dry. Now this I would have, this I had sitting on the burner, but I only had it there for a minute. So you can get the idea of the rings. If you want those rings, then just set it on the burner. Of course, not on. <laughs> set it on the burner and just let it air dry. It dries in, you know, half an hour or so. If you want extra stains, dry your piece of uh, paper, coffee stain paper, and then go back and drop some more coffee on to get these extra stains. And this is where I was saying sometimes I like to have a bit of white in my stains. And this is the material we stained. And I did come in and splash some more um, coffee just with flicking with my fingers on this material. And this is our doilies for that antique vintage look. And as you will see by this one, some areas I left a little lighter than others. I like that too. So, yeah, that's it with coffee staining your papers. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to, uh, I have gloves on because I'm a really mess, messy stamper. <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, I've ripped off a, a sheet of material and... I think what I'll do, yeah, so remember you want to tear it rather than cut it, so you get those frayed edges, like this, and you just pull off the extra long pieces. Like that. That's a perfect size for a little stamp. And cut it, you know, the sizes that you want, obviously. Okay. I'm going to do, let's see, I have four stamps here. And then I'm going to show you how I do it with the, uh... so just get your, cut started and then rip it. Sometimes when it's small like this it's a little hard to get get it ripped. So if it's just not working for you uh, cut it all the way across and then pull some threads to get a bit of a jagged edge. Okay. Now I have a larger one, so I need a larger piece of material. I don't know if I can get this on. No. Nope. So I'm going to grab a uh, larger piece. Let's see. I don't want the seam here, so I'm going to cut the, the seam. This is, uh, you don't want that. So cut that off and then cut a strip that's going to be large enough for, you know, one of your larger stamps. And 
and okay so I have one larger and three smaller ones just sometimes you need to just clean it up a bit okay now I'm just going to use archival black ink now that stands out the best the black but you can use other colors of course and let's start with our little house mouse now make sure you have lots of ink in your pad I'll use this one. I want to make sure my material is pretty flat. Yeah, that's not the greatest piece of material, but we'll do it anyway. We'll see. Now hold that down probably... 15 20 seconds to make sure the material soaks up your ink. And there you have it. Isn't that sweet? Okay, I have a Merry Christmas one. It's a new one, so I'm hoping it works well. Lots of ink. Let's see if this will fit on this piece of material. I don't think I got this very straight. There we have it. Okay. And I have a large one here. It's a goofy frog on a bicycle. I love these stamps. Great imagination, those that design them. Okay. And one more. Now I have a new stamp here that, again, I haven't uh, used it yet. I need my uh, block. I little threads all over the place here. <laughs> oh. Okay. I hope I have that straight. I love bee stamps. I don't know why. I love Victorian and vintage. Maybe that's got to do with why I love the bee stamps. And there we have it. Okay. Now I'm going to set up my little uh, cling stamps here. And then we will do a bunch at one time. Okay, now we have uh, some cling stamps. 
laid out here so that we can do uh, seven by the looks of it yeah okay I'm just going to apply my ink Put my material set down about the right place. And then press. So I hope everybody is well out there. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me where you're from. I ask this a lot. <laughs> I get some answers. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that's good enough. And there we have it. Beautiful stamps. Now, of course, I'm going to rip these. I'm not going to uh, cut them because I do want the frayed edges. So let me see. Let's do this one. Let's cut this way first so that we have... Uh... So we separate. And then we're going to come this way. Measure how how wide you want it. Yeah, sometimes it's really difficult to rip. So I'm just going to cut through. And then pull some threads. That one's sort of ragged looking. <laughs> That's okay, sort of the point, isn't it? Okay, let's do another one. When they're small like this, it's hard to uh it's hard to rip. Let's get this a little bit straighter. I mean no perfection here. We're talking about little raggy tags. So I'm just pull. And this will give you a, a little edge here. Let's cut this too. There you have it. All right. So that uh, will give you an idea how I do them. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you picked up a few little tricks. Finish this one off, I guess. So these are great to add to cards for journals. Mixed media pieces. See now, wouldn't that be lovely inside a card? This warm and friendly greeting is dropping by to say that you are fondly thought about and wished a happy day. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. Would love a thumbs up if you liked it at all. If you didn't, then obviously don't give me a thumbs up. But I hope you do. And if you haven't subscribed, today's a good day to do that. And remember, today's a good day to have a good day. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.